We've got uh, quite a few challenges in this unique year, but one of them is the extra time it takes to actually put together a conference that is not only digital and physical, but both, and to do both really well. So we've worked out it takes about a 40%, 45% extra time burden on a managerial staff to get that to happen properly, so that's a major consideration. I think it's important to be realistic about what you can deliver. Uh, certainly with the case of this one, we started designing the program well before the COVID situation. And most of our session or sessions consist of multiple speakers, uh, up to 10 in fact in a session. If we were designing it again, we wouldn't do it that way. So I think one thing to take in mind is to have a more compact program so that it can be better managed in terms of the digital component and the broadcasting requirements. Uh, there's a lot of digital content being put out at the moment, there's lots of all digital conferences, but I always like asking the question, who ever got excited about an invitation to a webinar? The answer is most likely no one. Underpinning your digital content with a live event is definitely the way to go to enhance engagement, not only for people in the room, but also for the digital delegates. So that's the main learning, I think, is that there's still a definite place and need for a live core event, and that you build your digital and virtual components around that. The other thing is to really get your marketing right. You need to look closely at who it is the traditional attendees of the conference and try and expand your content just a bit to get into some extra markets to supplant the numbers of people that won't be coming due to travel restrictions. In this case, this was always a drones conference, but this year it's a drones and robotics conference, and that has contributed to about 40% of our numbers. But we thought we were going to get 300 live delegates, 300 digital delegates. Well, we're over 450 live delegates, and we've got something like 50-60% more delegates internationally. Plus, we've got conference delegates now on the digital platform around the world that we would never have managed to reach otherwise. We will redesign sessions to make them a bit more streamlined, less speaker intense in terms of multiple speakers and more focused. We might make them shorter as well. Uh, that will then give people who are watching remotely the opportunity to come and go. One thing we did this year, and we'll certainly repeat it again next year, is that the digital content of this conference will be available on an on-demand basis for the next six months. So for the first time, it'll actually be possible to register for a conference and participate in it after it's actually finished. And that's something we've learnt there's a real demand for, and we'll certainly be carrying that forward to next year. Every event we've done here over the last 25 years has always been a collective situation between ourselves and BCEC management. This year it's really come to the fore. If your event is under 500 people, you can actually operate within the venue's COVID safe plan rather than having to go to the expense and trouble and trial and error of creating your own. So that's been a standout successful component of our relationship this year. But on top of that is the willingness by BCEC to go the extra mile to accommodate the very special challenges that COVID and all the resulting regulation have presented organisers of events with. And they've helped us every step of the way and I think that's a true tribute to the management here.